whether it's cutting down on sugar, eliminating social media, or even quitting smoking, breaking a habit is not easy. It doesn't just happen overnight, that there are various stages of change that a person might go through uh, to ultimately succeed in changing that habit. The Berkeley Health and Music Institute at Berkeley College of Music hopes to help break one of those habits with a new project, Smokeless Break Beats. We can continuously throw out, here's the health challenge that we know is happening within our communities. Here's what we know about the music therapy literature, the music medicine literature, the psychology of music, healthcare research. How do we come up with a solution? And in this case, we had the client, Nicorette, who was very interested in saying, hey, what can we do? For two weeks, 34 students at Berkeley composed original songs that should stimulate the same areas of the brain that are triggered by smoking a cigarette. The research shows that music may activate those same feel-good chemicals in your brain that also cigarettes do as well. When composing the beats, Berkeley Health and Music Institute considered confidence, physical release, focus, and relaxation, traits they say smokers are seeking when they reach for a cigarette. Leisha McKnight and Yuval Gore say they created their tracks with those four principles in mind. It's curated to each individual person what you need in that moment. So if you are um, needing to find confidence in that moment, you would go to that particular track. Composing music from that scientific standpoint of what neurons are activated when you hear that type of music really helps you to create a better rounder and more effective track. Not only does the project provide real life experience for these music students, but it's a chance to help others on their journey to quit. Coming from my personal experience as, as an ex-smoker, you know, when I was in the army and that was my, basically that was my excuse to, to take a break. Coming from that aspect and have something that is healthier, something that I can put my music and soul into it to help other people that it's the most re rewarding feeling that you can have. This pork carnitas has got to cook for a total of two and a half hours. So I'm going to pop it back in. Brian Carlson is chef de cuisine at his Watertown home. I start with a classic, do it exactly the way it's written, and then begin morphing off of that into something that either meets family taste, which always has to drive a home cook. But for Carlson, cooking is a bit different. At 11 years of age, I became a blind person. Carlson says navigating the kitchen can be a challenge, but with the right systems in place, he can create gourmet meals. And that comes to the second thing that people worry about what blind people are going to do, and that is work with sharp objects, like knives put my hand always on the back and reach down to feel what the blade looks like. I always put the knives down right handle to the right. While Carlson has his kitchen in order, he says he struggles to find recipes that are accessible to a blind person. When I first got started, I worked from very, very few braille cookbooks. It's hard to cook and read with your hands without damaging the book you're touching. Today, millions of recipes are available on the internet for sighted people. For Carlson and other blind people, accessibility can be a major challenge. In 2020, Perkins Access, a branch of Watertown's Perkins School for the Blind, partnered with America's Test Kitchen to create recipes accessible to all. People with disabilities like to cook too, and they like to cook at home. Flashy web pages littered with ads won't do here. Perkins Access Director Jeff Freed says simple changes made to the America's Test Kitchen site help the roughly one million blind people living in the U.S. find what they're looking for. We cook the noodles in at least four When they're using color on a web page, there needs to be a sufficient contrast ratio between text and the background. That's to ensure that people with low vision can see and read the text clearly. But that benefits everybody who comes to the website. When searching for new recipes, Brian Carlson says the America's Test Kitchen website works for him. Still, I can't say any website is 100% accessible. 
Pete and his team at Perkins Access hope by teaching web designers to build accessible sites from the ground up, creators and users will have an improved experience all around. It's really cool when you not only show people how to fix something, but then they take that concept and think, from now on, when I create this new version of the web page or a website or I create a new component, I'm going to think about accessibility from the very beginning as opposed to after I've created it. And Perkins Access Director Jeff Freed, as you just heard him say, is like these changes made to these websites are not just for the visually impaired. Right, accessible websites help people with other disabilities. For example, if they can't use a mouse or a keyboard, the uh, websites will help them as well. As for Brian Carlson, as you saw, he's really a very talented, creative, innovative chef. It's amazing. He even has what he calls a cheat sheet for his <laughs> Instapot, so we can use that also. He's incredible, <laughs> incredible. All right.